Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad Nurik al-Sari wa madarik al-Jari wa jma'ani bihi fi kulli atwari wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ya Nur wa iyahum wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin and we ask Allah to send salutations and peace upon our master Muhammad as well as his family and companions and that he make us with him in all of our states. And we ask that Allah include us in these prayers with them and among them. We ask Allah that by his mercy, and Allah is the most merciful of the merciful. And Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib said, mentioning the Mawlid of the Prophet Sallallahu and when we are in this month of this Mawlid and this month in which this radiant being in body and spirit emerged into this realm, and that's what we commemorate. And we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to give each of us a strong bond to him and give in each of us an increase in that light and that we follow his guidance. So Abbas mentioned his birth in poetry and the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged him saying, speak and may Allah preserve you from losing your teeth. And he said, وَمِن قَبْلِهَا طِبْتَ فِي الْذِلَالِ وَفِي مُسْتَوْدَعٍ حَيْثُ يُخْصَفُ الْوَرَقُ ثُمَّ حَبَتْتَ الْبِلَادَ لَا بَشَرٌ أَنْتَ ولا مضغة ولا علق بل نطفة تركب السفينة وقد ألجم نصرا وأهله الغرق تنقل من صالب إلى رحم إذا مضى عالم بدا تبق حتى تحتوى بيتك المهيمن من خند في علياء تحتها النطق وأنت لما ولدت أشرقت الأرض وضاءت بنورك الأفق فنحن في ذلك الضياء وفي النور وصبل الرشاد نخترق. So in these last two lines, Al Abbas he said, when you were born, the earth was illumined and the horizons shone with your light, and we are in that light and we are in that radiance and we travel the pathways of guidance. Allahumma inna nas'aluk bi jahil mamduhi indaka wal madihi an tu'adhdha ma haddana min dhalika an-nur wa ad-diya wa an tahdiyana ila sabil ar-rashad and we ask you O Allah by the one who is praised and the one who is praising that you give us a great portion a great fortune of this light and this radiance and that you guide us to the pathways of guidance. We ask you, O Allah, by your mercy and you're the most merciful of the merciful to give a quick faraj, a quick relief to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and give us each and our loved ones and the members of our household, Ya Allah, a strong bond with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is never unraveled not during our life, not upon our death, not in the barzakh, not on Yom Al-Qiyamah, and not in paradise. We ask you that, O oh Allah, by your mercy, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has the distinction among prophets of being the first and the last. The first to be created, the last to emerge. This one who, when he emerged into this realm, it was an emergence of light, an emergence of mercy, and also a a truth that smited the faces of the idols and the idolaters of his time. How many of them were inverted or fell to their faces or the fire of fire worshipers was extinguished when he emerged into this realm, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And if, when we look at, as Sheikh Ibrahim mentioned, those radiant individuals like Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu or like Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu or like Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, or like Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, or like Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, or like Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, or the other Ummahat al Mu'mineen and Banat of the, of the Prophet and the female companions, what we see are radiant, illumined individuals reflecting his light, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, but we also see those unique beings, those persons who Allah selected to be the companions and those who are close to and beloved to and dear to his choicest creature, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he is al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but all of those are Mustafain, right? He's Allah's chosen. However, all of those companions similarly are chosen. And then if we look among the companions, from the choicest of those to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this speaks to our sisters, are the women in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And he said, from what he said is, حُبِّبَ إِلَيَّ مِن دُنْيَاكُمْ النِّسَاءِ 
from this world of yours, women have been made beloved to me. So if we are to speak, look at Sayyidatina Fatima Zahra, who he said literally, she's a part of me. Fatima is a part of me. What saddens her saddens me, and what gladdens her gladdens me. And then look at Sayyidatina Khadija al-Kubra, who our Mashaykh referred to as Hubaba Khadija, that great beloved Khadija. He praises her with a praise that if we were to list all of the praises that he gave her or that was given to her, perhaps this with respect to, to the faqir would be the dearest. This was what I would long for. This was what I would wish for. for. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa of her, inni ruziqtu hubbaha. Surely I have been provided or sustained or it's been bestowed upon me her love. She has a testimony of being beloved to Allah's beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. She has a testimony of virtue from Allah's beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said khayru nisa'iha Maryam wa khayru nisa'iha Khadija. The best of its women are Maryam and from the meanings of that is the women of the world or the women of that ummah. The best of the women of the world are Maryam and the best of the women of the world are Sayyidatina Khadija. And this is a selection undoubtedly that was given to her by Allah. She was chosen by the best of creation, but he, she in herself was a noble individual, a pure being, someone with noble intentions. And we've spoken much about marriage. One of the things we can say and her life certainly is a testimony for that. The, most in, the beginning of a marriage and the beginning of a family and the beginning of child rearing is in what? Is in an, in, in an intention. And she was someone who had lofty intentions. Her intentions far outstretched the world, far outstretched wealth, far outstretched um, influence. She was a wealthy woman of, of Quraysh mentioned to be of the most wealthy and noble or the most wealthy and noble and greatest of the people of Quraysh. She would send a caravan. Quraysh would send a caravan and her caravan alone would equal that of the rest of Quraysh. She was married twice as Sheikh Ibrahim referenced. She was married to, to Abi Hala bin Zurara at Tamimi. And she was married to Atik bin Ayyad al Makhzumi. She had children from each of them, from Hala, Hala, and Hind. From, uh, from Atik, Hind, Hind was female, the other two were male. She had been widowed twice, despite that, due to her nobility, due to her honor, due to her wealth and status among Quraysh. The nobles of Quraysh sought her hand, they offered her money. They would, she would have gained status. Al Habib, وسلم, he's a young man. He's not a wealthy man. He's 25 years old. However, she had an immense intention. We talk about having a high aspiration and inspiring for those things that are elevated, like the beatific vision, like proximity of Al-Habib in the Akhirah, like Allah and His Messenger in the Akhirah, not lowly things like the world, like wealth, like status. She had a high aspiration. She aspired to be with the last Prophet And that also speaks to, again, the, the, not just the importance, but the influence of intention, right? Junaid bin Muhammad said, if someone opens for himself or herself the door of a good intention, Allah will op open for them 70 of the doors of tawfiq. She intended to be the wife of the last prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be both pleased with her. And Ibn Abbas narrates, and, and we've mentioned in these nights of virtues, the various predictions of this last Prophet Sallallahu And that those who had knowledge of the scripture in the Prophet Sallallahu time, they kept informing the people of Quraysh, his family members, others of Quraysh, that a last Prophet is going to appear. So Ibn Abbas mentions that there was a celebration of the ladies of Quraysh, and a Jewish man approached them and yelled with, at the top of his lungs, O women of Quraysh, a Prophet is getting ready to be, appear among you. Any of you that can be his wife, let her do so. Right? And he's interrupting a party, right? He seems like a, a, a wandering, what do you say, a darwish, as we say, you know, yelling about prophets and this and that. So the ladies actually start stoning him and insulting him and Sayyidatul Khadija was silent from that and she remembered what he said, right? She remembered that there's a prophet coming and intended to be the wife of that prophet. 
and she observed Al Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She observed in him his akhlaq, his character. She observed in him his truthfulness, his honesty, and he was known for being honest. And he had no other nickname among the people of Quraysh of Mecca at his time other than Al Amin. She observed in him his trustworthiness, and she offered him a bargain, and she would hire men to take her caravan and split the profits with them. She offered him to take her, her merchandise and engage in trade for her and she said she would give him double what she gave another man. And undoubtedly, she had an idea that this was him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was testing him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she sent a servant of hers, Maysara, uh, with him. So Maysara witnessed the monks predict that this is the last prophet. No one has sit under, sat under this tree since Isa other than the last prophet. They noticed, uh, Maysara noticed, his honesty, notice his trustworthiness, notice his akhlaq, notice the, the, the cloud shading him wherever he went, and in a narration, angels shading him wherever he went. So he returns with the caravan of Al Khadija, and she's sitting on an elevated position in her, in her home, observing them approach, and in some narration, she sees a cloud shading him, in some narration, she sees angels shading him. And Maysara rushes and informs her of what he saw, what he saw of the Prophet Sallallahu of his akhlaq, of the wealth that was earned. And he earned more than the other men and she doubled what she promised to pay him. Of this monk in predicting his being the last Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she said she sent, or a, a, a woman, Ibn Sa'ad narrates that a woman named Nafisa said that she sent me literally deceased. Like she sent me as like a messenger or like a spy, right? to go and ask the Prophet what stops you from, from marrying? Why don't you marry? What if you were invited to someone who is wealthy and beautiful and noble and suitable for you as a wife? Would you respond? And he said, and, and what is that? And, and she said, Khadija. And he said, how would I do that? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have that type of wealth. He said, what if you were suffice from the wealth? So then this woman, uh, Nafisa, she went and told Sayyidatina Khadija, right? Informed Khadija that he'd be willing you know, if, he, if, if there was a way for that. So Sayyidatina Khadija said, tell him to come at such and such time, right? And some of the narrations mention specifically that she's the one who proposed to him. And then all other narrations that a message was sent and then he came with um, the, his tribesmen, such as Abu Talib, such as Hamza, and proposed to her. In a narration of Ibn Hajar, the, or the Ibn Hajar narrates in Fatbari, Abu Talib narrates, or it's narrated that Abu Talib, when Muhammad وسلم, went to respond to Sayyidatina Khadija's message, <laughs> Abu Talib told a girl called Nab'a, follow Muhammad وسلم, and observe what happens. Right? So Nab'a returned and informs Abu Talib that I saw something amazing. As soon as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reached the door, Sayyidatina Khadija appeared. And she took her hand and held it against her, uh, her chest, right, and her neck, or the base of her neck on the top of her chest. And she said, may my father and mother be your ransom. I'm not, Allah, I swear by Allah, I'm not doing this for anything except that I anticipate that you are the last prophet. And if you are him, you pray for me to the Lord who sent you, right? So she offered her hand, this noble woman, she was known as a ta'ira, right, a ta'ira, excuse me. The, uh, the, the pure. She was known as Sayyidat, Sayyidatu Nisa'i Quraysh, the most noble of the women of Quraysh, the, from the most wealthy and greatest of station of the people of Quraysh. She turned away from all of that, turning to what? To prophecy, brothers and sisters. She had a himma. She had an intention. That is what gave her that immense station, or that is, we could say, what Allah inspired in her as a suburb, as like a means to attaining the station of being the most noble and dear wife of the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of being a being that Allah selected to be from the closest of people to the dearest of beings to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak alayhi wa ala So Shaykh Ibrahim was talking about, are we choosing the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are we following the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa We ask Allah to grant us to have intentions of witness of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That we want to be with him in his sunnah. And with him in his akhlaq. And with him in his person. 
and with him in his radiant countenance, and with him in his fragrance, and with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we're awake, and when we're asleep, and when we do salah, and when we recite Quran, and when we interact with those who are old, and when we interact with those who are young, and when we interact with our spouses and our children, and the non-Muslims in the society, aspiring to be with Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And there are those who their paradise is being with Al-Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us with him. May Allah grant us to choose him over everything else. And that was what Sayyidina Khadija did. Radiallahu anha wa ardaha. She could have had anything. All of the nobles of Quraysh offering themselves to her. She offered herself to whom? To Allah and his messenger. She aspired to Allah and his messenger. So they were married when she was 40 and he was 25, as Shaykh Ibrahim mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed their home. Blessed their home and blessed her to be the grandmother, the great-grandmother of Ahlul Bayt. Manaqib, unlike the, uh, with virtues, unlike the virtues of other women of her time, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, right? And she served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She assisted him, as he said, she believed in me when people disbelieved in me. She affirmed me when people belied me. She supported me when others deprived me. Allah gave me children from her and denied me the children of other women. Right? All of his living children are from her, Sayyidatina Khadija radiallahu anha. His four daughters and his three sons, two of them are from her. All of the sons died, but all of his four daughters, Sayyidatina Fatima, Sayyidatina Umm Kulthum, Sayyidatina Ruqayya, and Sayyidatina Zainab, all of them from Khadija. Also, Abdullah and Qasim, Qasim, Abdullah, Tayyib, and Tahir, from Sayyidatina Khadija radiallahu anha wa aradaha. She has the distinction of being with him for 25 years straight. That he recompensed her for what she did for him by never marrying upon her, right? Never marrying another woman upon her, even if that would have been permissible. He mentioned, as he said, Inni ruziptu hubbaha. She served him. Who does he return to after the cave of Hira that we'll see in the, the concluding nights of this, virtues, of this year's virtues? He returns to Sayyidina Khadija, who is the first believer, right? The first person to willingly, voluntarily embrace Islam after he receives the revelation, we could, you know, you could say the first of the men is Abu Bakr, the first of the children is Sayyidina Ali, the first of the uh, slaves is Sayyidina Abu you could say that and that would be valid. The first person without qualification unequivocally is Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha. She immediately embraces Islam. She serves him during the years of Mecca, supports him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supports the, the, the poor believers, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha. She serves him with her own hands, again, despite her being older than him, despite her being wealthy herself, uh, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, and Bukhari and Muslim narrate that once she was coming and understand something, they talk about certitude, right? Certitude has ilm yaqeen, ayn yaqeen, haq yaqeen. Certain knowledge, certainty of sight, and true certainty. The Siddiqeen and the, prof the Prophets and the Kummal, like the, 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 the elect, the perfected Siddiqeen, they're the ones in this station of true certitude, right? The unseen becomes the seen to them. They experience the, the, the unseen, the angelic realm. Sayyidatina Khadija, she's in that station, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, right? So she's going to meet the Prophet, sallam, and she's never met Jibril, and Jibril appears to her. Right? And she's in awe, so she essentially flees. And then the asl of this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And then she comes to the Prophet ﷺ and Jibril beats her to the Prophet ﷺ and says, Here comes Khadija carrying a vessel of food or drink. When she arrives, give her salams from her Lord and from me. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Haq. Jalla Jalalu wa ta'ala fi ula sent salams to Sayyidatul Khadija. Sayyidina was mentioning, what if, uh, what if your beloved mentioned your name? Al-Haq, the real subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent a greeting to Sayyidatul Khadija. Right? Istifa, selected beings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had a high aspiration. She had an intention. She preferred Al-Habib Muhammad sallallahu over all else. And look what Allah gave to her. He gave her himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Revealed himself to her on the tongue of Jibril alayhi salam, on the tongue of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gives salams, give her salams from Allah and from me. 
from her Lord and from me and give her tidings of a home in paradise of what? Of hollow pearls. What in the world is a hollow pearl? A pearl starts from the middle and proceeds outward. In general, there's things that no heart has seen. No, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it occurred to the heart of any human being. I don't know what a hollow pearl is, but it's, that's, that's what, bin qasab. Bin hollow pearls. La sakhaba fihi wa la nasab. There's no shouting therein, nor is there any weariness. Right? Because what did she do? She protected the Prophet ﷺ from all weariness. Supported him, comforted him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Jibril gives her salams. Right? So how does she respond? And they say of her that she was a woman that was hazima, right? Like a firm woman, a strong woman, a noble woman. And we'll add to this, she was someone in haq yaqeen. She's an arif billah. She's a faqiha, right? Someone with knowledge of God, someone understanding of the religion. The companions in Al Madina, in their tahiyah that we say, at tahiyatu lillah, right? We greet Allah. Salutations to Allah. Some of them said, As-salamu ala Allah, right? The Prophet ﷺ corrected them. You don't say, As-salamu ala Allah. Allah is salam. Sayyidina Khadija receives a greeting from Allah on the tongue of the angel Gabriel, on the tongue of the Nabi Muhammad ﷺ, and look at her tamkeen, right? Look at her firmness, her groundedness, her understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and attributes, and from his names is, he is As-salam. So she, she replies perfectly, Inna Allah huwa salam. Surely Allah is a salam. Wa ala Jibril as salam. And salam back to Angel Jibril, right? We're the friends of, of angels, Ashab Haqqul Yaqeen. And upon you, O Messenger of Allah, as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right? So she replies perfectly. So he lives with her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during those 15 years before receiving revelation. And she's anticipating that this is the last Prophet. He receives revelation. Who does he go back to? Zammiluni, Zammiluni, Sayyidina Khadija. Immediately confirms him. Takes him to Waraka, who confirms him. We'll discuss that in the last night. He continues to live with her during those difficult years. Three years he's summoning to Allah in secret. After that, he proclaims the message and continues to summon openly until they come. Uh, to like the end of the ninth year or beginning, yeah, the beginning of the ninth year. And they're embargoed, all the Prophet ﷺ and his tribe, Banu Hashim, and their cousins, Banu Muttalib, all of them are embargoed in the ship of Abu Talib, in land that was belonged to Abu Talib, um, denied what? Food, any, any commerce, any buying or selling from them, anyone marrying to them or from them so starved by this embargo that they had to eat desert foliage that split the sides of their mouths, right? Living in difficulty, she stands by him through that difficulty, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, and then he's released from that difficulty, and in Ramadan, Sayyidina Abu Talib, his support dies. Three days after him, Sayyidina Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha, passes, undoubtedly partly being affected by this embargo that's just been placed on them, this hardship that she's been in, radiallahu ta'ala anha, supporting al Habib al Mustafa, sallallahu and what does he name the, the year of the passing of this dear wife of his, right? Sayyidah to Nisa'i Quraysh, right? The, the most noble of the women of Quraysh, this one about whom he said, Inni ruziqtu hubbaha, surely I've been granted her love. What does he name the year of her death? Amul Huzn. Right? So, so yani, how great is a being whom the Prophet ﷺ proclaimed the love he had for that person and who he, he named the year of her passing the year of sorrow. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a strong connection to this beloved, to give our hearts light from the light of this beloved ﷺ. And that Allah give our relationships to be illumined by the light of this beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa and we ask you, O oh Allah, and you're the most merciful of the merciful, do not deny any of us the gaze at that noble countenance on the Qiyamah or in Jannah, and do not deny any of our ladies gazing at the noble countenance of Sayyidina Khadija bin Khuwaylid, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, please excuse me.